And welcome back. Thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, it's been a week since the reopening of schools in the country. And while some schools adhere to the health protocols uh, slowly phasing in grades 7 and 12, many remained closed due to infrastructure challenges and COVID-19 infections. In Gauteng, for example, uh, Premier David Makura said that 54 schools had been affected by COVID-19 and uh, some districts across the province as well. And as of the 11th of June, the Eastern Cape Education Department had to close 27 schools after positive cases were confirmed. Now, to reflect on the first week of schooling uh, since it resumed, we're now joined by Basil Manuel, who is the Executive Director of the National Professional Teachers Organization of South Africa, NAPTOSA, as well as Faranaz Variava, who is Head of Education Rights Program at Section 27. And we are expected to be joined by Tebo Khomakha the Secretary General of the Congress of South African Students, COSAS. Uh, he's not with us at the moment as yet. But uh, thanks so much to Basil and uh, Faranaz for now for speaking to us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Faranaz. Pleasure to be with you. Now, uh, let me start with you, Faranaz. Uh, how would you describe the first week since schooling resumed? Well, there's been a lot of trying to get the laws and the systems in place. Um, so we are very focused on the legal side of things. Um, and as you know, the standing operating procedures that schools have to adhere to have been published. Um, the, what government has had to make a lot of amendments to are the directions on school openings. Um, I think that should come out anytime soon. That had quite a few issues, but I think that will provide more clarity now going forward. With our client schools, what we have seen a lot of are issues around sanitation infrastructure. So issues where um, water tanks and pit to where there are pit toilets that are supposed to be replaced with mobile toilets. Some schools haven't received that as of yet. Uh, Faranaz, we seem to be getting an echo back from uh, your side, so we're just going to try and fix that uh, whilst I speak to Basil. And Basil, um, also your uh, view, your assessment on the first week back at school, but also to the best of your knowledge, how many schools have had to close? Good morning. Well, it's been a mixed bag. Every province has certainly seen a number of schools closing. To a greater or lesser degree, we know that uh, the Western Cape has had the vast majority because, of course, they've been open for a little longer. But every province has had, and it's very difficult to pin a number, because they close and then they reopen after a couple of days. Uh, that's the one issue. The other issue, however, is the inconsistency applied infection at a school. Different provinces seem to be doing different things. And tragically, the principals are caught up in the middle of this because sometimes very unpopular messages to, to teachers who are stressed out and panicked, as well as parents. Um, you have people saying, okay, uh, much contact, so we'll be back in a day. And then, of course, they don't realize uh, the psyche that uh, of the people and the psychological impact this has on teachers, on learners, and of course on parents as well, particularly where we've seen children in the high schools uh, getting infected as well, because we've had a fair number of those as well. So um, there's a call for greater consistency, and there's a call for greater support to our principals and our teachers, because uh, they are the ones that this. Of course, we know the schools are not the problem in that the schools are not infected. People come in with the infection, but that doesn't matter. The, the, the point is people are still being infected and are still really, really stressed out because of it. Even this morning in, in Bloemfontein, there's a school that phoned early hours this morning where somebody tested positive over the weekend. And the, the, the teachers are terrified of, of going to school and terrified about what they're going to do when they get there. And um, so our, our view is that it's been really a mixed bag. The calls for us to review this are not insane. They are things that we are busy with. We've got to look at it carefully. But at this moment, 
we think it was still a good decision to open schools, notwithstanding the fact that, as Farnar said, there are many schools that still present serious problems. And I'm talking about sanitation issues. I'm talking about PPEs. I'm talking about water. We're more than 300 schools in the greater KZN area are still without water. And we were promised that that would have been sorted out within the week. So serious problems. But of course, we're looking ahead because the next issue is the return of more than 60% of the learners on the 6th of July. And are we ready to accept all those learners at this stage when there are shortages already showing of PPEs of various types and of course of readiness just generally to manage the situation? So we think we are in for a bit of a rough ride, but at the same time, we have to keep our eye on the ball. We've got to check that the, the, the safety and the health of our members is being looked after. So at this stage, are we ready to receive more learners in different grades back into schools, given what we've witnessed in the first week of the return of grade 7 and 12? Uh, just from the feedback that you've received from your members, uh, Basil, uh, what are they <clears throat> saying to you uh, with regard to especially PPEs and those sanitation issues that you highlighted as well? There have been a number of concerns expressed. The, the huge number of concerns suggests that we are not yet there. Of course, the promise from the education department is that there are still a few days left this entire week and next week to get these things delivered, which is true. However, schools at the moment that don't have the first set of PPEs, how in heaven's name are we going to do the second one? So we are going to once again... Uh, assess, we are going to do a survey, we're going to check with our members on the ground, and we are going to get a reflection on how true is it that we are going to be ready. From where I'm sitting at the moment, uh, I'm seriously doubtful of the commitment to get the schools properly ready. Remember, the, the pressure is much greater on the schools, much greater on both principals and teachers, because we've got a social distance, a much larger number of learners. And some schools have no clue how they're going to do this. The parents have no idea of the models that they are going to be there. Parnas made reference to the Government Gazette that is also being uh, amended at the moment. And it makes reference to various models. And I don't think there's sufficient preparation. So NAPTOSA is assisting its members in getting ready. At the same time, we have to observe and ensure that, in fact, the department is playing its part because we cannot oh, go to the next phase if the first phase hasn't been completed properly. So, Farinaz, and I'm hoping the line is better this time. Um, how do we draw and where do we draw the line here? On the one hand, mm -hmm. government is trying to save the academic year, uh, but now we have infections at schools. Oh, what should be done? How do we go about salvaging what can be salvaged at this point? So what we talk about is having in place for schools and hygiene and when we talk about that we talk about screening orientation PPE, sanitation and very importantly social distancing but very importantly monitoring so to make sure that schools can continue safely we have to make sure that all those basic pillars are in place and we can only do that by monitoring effectively and where there are issues, schools and the department, if they want to save the school year, have to make sure that all these other issues are in place. And obviously, we know that independent schools and the historically uh, advantaged schools have an advantage again here because you know, they will be able to social distance better, they have more space. They have more access to resources like sanitation, like sanitizers. So we have to make sure that it is the disadvantaged schools that are being carefully monitored and where issues come up, they are addressed. Where school is closed because of infections in terms of the standard operating procedures, we have to make sure that those schools are quickly sanitized and that those who are infected are isolated, that people are tested, and that those that are COVID negative are able to come back to school as quickly as possible. 
Well, we are now joined uh, by uh, COSAS's uh, Secretary General, uh, Teboho Mahafane. Uh, Teboho, good morning. Thanks for speaking to us here on Morning Live. So let's get your assessment uh, about the first week of schooling. Uh, thank you very much to, uh, to the FAPC for giving us this opportunity. Uh, look, we must agree that the Department of Basic Education, uh, it was not ready. And uh, kids are as affected as educators. But uh, there is a solution after all, because the, currently our country needs leaders who give direction not uh, 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 how uh, how uh, people will not make noise without a solution. So, what do you believe as COSAS is the solution? Look, for us to save academic year, remember, uh, politicians must not think for themselves only, even structures on the ground, your COSAS, your SADU, your minister, we must think about the future of grade 12 and other grades, especially grade 12, because of. They are leaving pre-tertiary system to uh, tertiary system. As the organization, we have proposed to the minister that we need to go to uh, academic camps. Great terms must be taken to camps. But before that, we must have a COVID-19 educational tech team. Well, we know uh, the country is dealing with the common enemy, an invisible enemy, which is COVID-19. Then us, Pointing the singers who did this, who did not do this, we must come up with a solution that will save uh, those learners who are doing grade 12 and grade 7 and other grades. And we are saying our life matters, but we need also to save academic calendar. Hence, as the student organization, uh, we have taken a portion that kids must go to uh, educational camps. Mr. Makhafane, your members disrupted schooling in the Free State on Friday. Um, are you aware of this? And if so, why? Remember, uh, I'm the Secretary General. I'm full-time in the office. Uh, our members, the scholars, they feel the pain on the ground. And uh, they don't disrupt what they're doing. They're raising their voice. Remember, we have been calling the meeting with the minister, the minister, uh, minister of the Kanman board. What I can tell you now and what I can tell them now, uh, tomorrow we are meeting with the minister at the National Executive Committee to give them direction. And what I can tell now, uh, the minister is willing to listen to us as the organization, are going to give them a uh, proposal that creditors must go to camps. We must, you know, as a leader now, you must not want to do something without having a solution. Before you, uh, you do something, you must have a solution. As the organization, we have a solution that creditors must go to academic uh, camp because uh, we can't waste time. We need to save the academic calendar, but people must not take a business approach. And others, they are using opportunity, this opportunity of COVID-19 to disrupt. So uh, our members on the ground, they must not lose hope. Tomorrow, we'll be having a, a, a positive uh, answer for them, what must happen and what should happen from now. Um, Faranas, if I come back to you, are there any non-negotiables at the moment with regard to uh, learning and teaching and uh, some things under which condition no learner, no teacher should return to school? Pardon? I'm asking the question of uh, Faranas uh, Veriawa uh, uh, So, just asking her about negotiables. So which are the non-negotiables in this instance of returning to school? Yes, and it's there we can negotiate because we need to save lives. Because we are dealing with the enemy that we can't see, but when you move, that enemy is approach, which is COVID 19. For us to go to camps, uh, we, we must not negotiate it, and we must have a strategy of uh, uh, those camps. Number one, before those kids. Are open. They were supposed to be tested. They were not tested. You go to Limpopo, you find 
the entire MEC saying kids are not at school because of the infrastructure. It shows that there is something with uh, something wrong with MECs lying in public. So, yes, why are you pulled? When the country was in crisis during a party, it's because of that gave light. We are here to give the light to save lives in the academic calendar. And we are not negotiating it. Even the minister, we told her, I told her that we are not going to negotiate that kids must go to camps. And we need a, a scientific report. And uh, we ask her that the meeting that will be having, the, min, uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Evelyn Kize, he must be there because of the one who is dealing with death. Uh, Minister okay. of Public Education, he must deal with education and leave issues of uh, health to the Minister of Health. All right. Uh, let me try, Basil, in terms of the non-negotiables from your side. Uh, we heard there from COSAS what they are saying. And COSAS demanding that every student be tested. Uh, the practicality of that is another question altogether. But uh, as Naptosa, are there any non-negotiables at this stage? Yes, of course. The, the non-negotiables revolve around the health and safety of everybody on the premises. The, the, the cleanliness of the premises and that has to now do with the regular supply of materials to ensure that the premises are being cleaned, that, that the ablution facilities are of a standard, that they don't cause more harm than good, in greater infections. And of course, those PPEs, be they just soap, be they water, and the water supply is extremely important, these remain the non-negotiables, and they become as a greater number of learners comes. So we are now not at the point where we are worried about the initial uh, supply. It is about the continuation of supply because the continuation will determine whether we will maintain the standard. And unfortunately, this may not be happening. And this is where the problems start beginning to creep in. And of course, as human nature happens, we become a little bit more relaxed with social distancing and things like this. So the monitoring of the supply becomes extremely important and the commitment of provincial departments to ensure that no school is being neglected and that the, the poorest of the poor schools, which are the easiest to neglect, are in fact being attended to. Insofar as mass testing, etc., is concerned, our health department will say, and as we have spoken with the health department as well, that you can test today and tomorrow you get infected. So doing a whole lot of tests now uh, doesn't necessarily solve the problem. But what we do need to, to ensure is that when there is an incident at a school, that we do check properly and that the persons that can be most easily affected, like the teachers, are indeed tested, that the school is cleaned properly, and that the return, whilst it needs to be relatively speedily, must not forget the psychological health of everybody concerned. Uh, I think we're neglecting it. I don't think enough is put into place, and I think we're going to rue the day for it. Uh, for, for making such decisions because what is happening is that teachers then find themselves getting booked off because they are simply just not ready to return. And we've got to impress upon the authorities that you cannot simply just press on regardless. I want to point out that in KZN, the parliament was closed because there was suspected uh, contact with people who were COVID-19. The same people that went to schools with principals, checking that the schools were complying, but none of the principals were told to check their schools. And this is the inconsistency which we talk about. The department closed its offices, but didn't think it good enough to tell our principals, be careful, this is what happened. These people may have been uh, uh, in contact with somebody that is COVID-19, and the principals are blissfully unaware, and as a result, they carry the blame from the teachers when something happens. We are being unfair, and we are being reckless with the lives of our teachers in, in some instances. Faranaz, as uh, Basil points out, uh, what happens in the poorest schools, uh, can you give us an update on what is happening in the rural areas in particular? What's the situation there? Um, thanks, Sakina. I can say for me that essentials will be food safety, and schools shouldn't be opened where there aren't where 
PPE hasn't been delivered, where there isn't sanitizer and schools have been properly cleaned, and where sanitation and water don't um, have not been delivered effectively or don't exist at the school effectively. Now, coming back to the rural areas, last night there was a report that there are about, uh, I think, 300 schools in KZN that are still without uh, proper sanitation. And we consistently get reports from Limpopo about issues around uh, mobile toilets and sanitation. We do, we do have an established relationship now with the Limpopo Department of Education where we get complaints and then we've been filtering it through to the department. So we're I would then implore on the public listening schools where you are aware of these issues, you then have to let us know. The main thing is, as Basil said, there must be a confidence that schools are being made safe for learners and for teachers to return. Well, we have to wrap it up now, but uh, let me just get a final word from all of you. Um, uh, starting with you, uh, Tebuho, uh, firstly, as COSAS, uh, will you be disrupting school as a schooling this week or will you be engaging? Look, uh, I was taught that as a leader, before you take action, I must discuss. But what matters now is our lives. And we are going to meet with the minister then we'll take it from there. As I've said, uh, I'm the Secretary General living with a collective. A collective must decide what we want, but what we want, we want what's best for learners. Unlike those who will wear teachers of colors and disrupt schools without anything. Remember here, yeah, what are dealing with different minds. Others, they will create the havoc just to uh, create havoc. But the, as I've said, that the country needs leaders now, not howlers. Uh, as the 19 NEC that is led by President Tawamukwena, we're going to engage with the minister, failing for the minister to meet our demand. Then it's where uh, we'll say, uh, oh, but now we can't. Young people need to fulfill their future. We can't say as causes we are fighting for a, a, a black child or African child to get better education, then it's us who are disrupting. And the weight of the SATC disrupting is uh, incorrect. We are not disrupting, but uh, we voice out our voice because those kids are voiceless. So it's mm. the only a solution is because us. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, just to correct that, your members did disrupt and they promised to continue disrupting today in the free state. They uh, were not voicing. They actually went into classrooms and disrupted learning and teaching in the free state. But uh, just uh, uh, very uh, briefly, Basil, Manuel, Faranaz, Avariava, uh, what's the way forward from this week in? I think I what we say... have to do is we've, we've got to... <laughs> Sorry, Faranaz. I'll, I'll, I'll complete. We, we, we must just assess. And we've got to see that, in fact, there's consistency. And the appeal is uh, to, to senior management and middle management for humanity, humaneness in how we treat our people. Uh, whether it is in the supply of, of toilets, whether it is in the continued cleaning, or whether it is looking after the psychosocial uh, support of, of our teachers and our learners. We cannot ride roughshod over the psyche of our people. Fair enough. Yes, I would say the main thing is vigilance amongst teachers, parents, learners. Know what is essential for your children's safety. Take it up with the department. If the department is not listening, uh, civil society organizations like ours have been very active throughout the COVID-19 period. Equal Education, Equal Education Law Center, Section 27, have been engaging very robustly with the department. And wherever we have taken up issues, we have managed to address them and we will continue to do it on behalf of the learners across the country.
Well, thank you so much to all okay. our guests this morning, Basil Manuel, uh, Fernaz Veriava, and uh, also Tebo Homa Hafane. And uh, they are from Neptosa Section 27 and COSAS talking to us about uh, the first week of schools reopening and where to from here. Right, it's time for news. Leanne standing by with that.